Outrocast. How's it going there today, aside from having to talk to me? <laughs> Amazing. How are you? Great. Thank you very much. And leading straight into it, um, are we allowed to talk about the single that's not yet released, or are we waiting to talk about that? No, let's get right into it. Okay, so that single, If I Don't Laugh, I'll Cry. Um, when did you actually finish it? Because I believe the release date is May 6th, but things tend to have a long lead time. Yes. So I actually wrote that song about a month or two ago. I posted a little snippet of it onto TikTok. Then a lot of the comments were like, please finish it. So um, the next day I called my friend Russ, who I worked on the song with initially. And I was like, we have to finish this. So we got in the studio the next day and um, the song was done. We were able to get it done in like a week and a half, which is crazy because usually the process for writing and finishing a song is like, like a lot longer, like months. So we did it quick and yeah. Uh, that song, like most of your songs that I've heard, really, really strong grabbing chorus. And I get the mm -hmm. sense that for you, the chorus comes first. Is that the case in a lot of your songs? Definitely. Um, a lot of, so the chorus is obviously like the concept of the song and um, the title. And um, when I wrote that song, I had that, um, well, I had written it about a night out that I had had that just went totally south. And um, all I kept saying was, if I don't laugh, I'm going <laughs> to cry. Right. And I was like, okay, wait, that could be a cool lyric. And I wrote it down on my phone, got home that night. And um, I have a little studio uh, set up here in my room. And I just, um, I started writing like a couple of lyrics, a couple of ideas. And the chorus came and I just molded everything around it. That's both an awesome and a terrible thing in that you have these awful life experiences like anybody, but in your case, you could potentially turn it into uh, a song for yourself, for other people, thing that lives on. So on one hand, monetization potentially. The other hand, uh, you got to relive that memory over and over and over again. Definitely. Um, it is hard to relive, relive it over and over, but I feel like by writing it out, mm -hmm. you're kind of healing. And I'm noticing as, um, as I'm releasing more and more music and getting more messages and comments, like it's healing other people as well. So I think um, it is difficult while you're in the process of trying to um, get every emotion out of you and try and tell the story um, as best as possible. It's also just very healing at the end of it. Something you said before about how long it takes you to write songs. A lot of people I know are professional songwriters. They're like, if I don't have it in 15 minutes, it's not a song next. In other words, they, they just go, you're inspired or you're not. So it's very interesting to hear the craft involved in what you do. Are you yep. somebody who studied song structure before you started writing your own music? No, um, I... I did not study anything about music, um, never went to school for it. I took singing lessons when I was younger, but nothing that had to do with songwriting. I am self-taught. Mm -hmm. um, but on that note, I think it's very important um, to, to let songs live and like breathe. And um, my rule is like, never leave a session thinking that this is the final product. You know what I mean? Like you have to keep, you have to keep developing it and keep like, go back in and rewrite the verse. I rewrote, um, if I don't laugh, I'll cry at least like three or four times. Like I have, yeah, I have, um, voice notes on my phone of like a bunch of alternative lyrics that I had melodies. And I was like, this is it. And then the next night I would go back and I would do it again. And you just keep crafting it until it feels hundred percent. The stuff that you craft that you don't use, does that go in the trash or could that find its way into a song in the near future? Um, sometimes, sometimes I'll just like dig up old melodies that um, I tried to use, but didn't work. But then other times, sometimes like you just have to let it go and um, realize that it's part of the process of writing. You're not gonna 
go into the studio where you're not going to sit down and every song that you write is going to be incredible. I had an experience the other day where I was in the studio and um, I just like, my brain was just not there. And I was so annoyed when I left because um, obviously you want to leave and feel like, okay, we got a song, we have something here, mm-hmm. but um, we didn't. And that's a part of the process. Definitely. Sometimes you just have to like, let it go, move on and try again. You've had success writing for other artists, some of which, uh, some of which we haven't yet heard, or we don't necessarily know it's you who co-wrote it. It's one mm-hmm. of those things where I'm sure you have 10 songs that are on hold and you'll find out if one, zero or 10 of them are going to be placed in the near future. Yes. But I, I find that a lot of people these days do that for other artists and then they have their own career going on. Like LP is a great example of that. Yeah. Yes. The list goes on and on and on. Is that something that you want to do or is it happy accident that you've had success writing for other artists? Um, that's so funny. Um, I don't even, how would I describe it? So basically I, I always wanted to be an artist. That was my number one thing, but I always wrote for myself. So that was, I always had that. And when I was 17, I was given an opportunity to sign a publishing deal. And um, I said to myself, okay, we're gonna sign this publishing deal. Let's develop as a writer. Let's get as good as possible. And um, you know, whatever that looks like, is it writing for myself? Is it writing for other people? And I guess, I guess it was like a little bit of a happy accident. Um, I was, you know, writing a bunch of songs. I would get them pitched to artists, some artists would pick them up, or I would be in a session with an artist like, um, like Tate McRae, John mm-hmm. Legend, and it, um, yeah, it just came to be that I started writing songs for other people as well. But it wasn't an accent because you had that publishing deal, you had potentially somebody putting you in the room with people. Is this something yeah. you see yourself doing the rest of your life, the rest of your career? And that wasn't like, that didn't, that wasn't my plan initially, but, um, I think, I think so for the rest of my career, definitely my number one focus is myself and my artist project. But, um, I love, I love collaborating and writing for and with other artists. I think there's something so awesome and special about it. I feel like every time that I go into a session, that's not for me, I'm, I leave with more knowledge and I'm able to grow even more because of course, like I'm writing for myself. I have a specific lane, a specific sound. And um, I know what I want to talk about, but I think it helps me as a writer for even myself being able to go into a session and help tell someone else's story. In having managed some singer songwriters and co-writers, I've kind of learned that usually the person has the specialty that they bring into the room. Like you'll learn that, oh, that person is the vibes guy. Like he, he can't play an instrument. He can't sing. <laughs> Strictly there for the vibes, yeah. He brings the vibes and that person is, is a co-writer in huge, huge hits. What, if you're allowed to say, if this doesn't get in the way of your strategy, what is it that you usually bring to the writing session? Do you have a, is it like, it starts with a guitar and a melody or do you start from scratch? Um, so when I'm in a session, well, every, honestly, every session is different, but I think what I bring to the table in a session is like, I'm one, I'm very dramatic. So if you, if you give me a story or you, you want to talk about something, I will take that and I'll blow that up and make it 10 times bigger. Um, same with like my own stories, like it Mm -hmm. could just be the simplest like thing. And I'll be like, okay. Um, But also my favorite thing in a session is to do melodies. Like that's, I feel top line. Yeah, I think that's definitely um, my my strong point. But at the same time, like it ebbs and flows. Like some months I'll be like really um, just obsessed with getting lyrical and um, honing in on that. Mm -hmm. But um, right now I'm really just loving to do um the melody is the top line and um I think that's what I bring bring so no no writer's block for you these days <laughs> no I always have something to write about always 
That's awesome. So bring it back to your artist career. If I don't laugh, I'll cry is the next single. You don't have to say what it is. I don't know what's under embargo, but how far ahead are you planning? You know, in other words, is the next move based on the success of that single? Or are you like, hey, I know when the album is, I know when these things are and I'm hitting the road then. So I definitely think that um, I want to take my time when it comes to releasing, um, putting out music, making sure that everything I put out is true to myself mm -hmm. and um, going to not only resonate with me, but um, the people that are already listening. So um, I'm trying not to plan too far ahead, but I do have, I have a whole bunch of, I have albums worth of music right now. Um, so I guess we're just going to see, uh, we're going to let, if I don't laugh, I'll cry, do its thing. And, yep. um, and then go from there. I have a couple of like follow-up songs ready to go. Um, but when it comes to album and, uh, like the next, you know, 12 releases, I try not to think about that yet. Got it. So it's sort of planned out, but not too planned out. Exactly. Exactly. I noticed that, you know, you're going to have a plan today and then wake up tomorrow, something happens and sure. your whole thing is shifted. So I've, through the years, I've noticed that just, you know, taking things a little slower is, is better. Uh, three rapid questions and then you are free. Uh, the first one is who or what was the thing that made you want to pursue the career in music? Like, for example, why did I pick up guitar? It was Green Day. Okay. Who or what was it for you? Um, basically, I, I don't know if I had um, a moment of inspiration um, that in initially had me want to do music. Um, but when, when I was around five years old, um, my, it was the summer going into kindergarten. My mom was working in the city and she needed to put me somewhere <laughs> during the summer. So, um, my school had a summer camp. And the first thing that we did, um, in the day was, uh, start with singing lessons. And I just knew the second that I started singing, I was like, I love this. I want to be a performer. Um, and I never stopped. I worked with that teacher, um, Carol Kenny up until I was 15, 16 years old. And um, yeah, I just knew it. It it never, it was never like, once I started, it was never a thing that I wasn't gonna do it. I just was like, oh, this is, this is for me. This is my thing. Cool. Yeah. Then uh, next question, you as a fan, what's the last concert that you went to or a live show that you saw that wasn't out, oh, I might write with this person, let me check them out. but. It, Hey, I love this person's music. Let me go see them live. Um, the last concert that I went to. Some people are like, oh, uh, that was two and a half years ago before the pandemic. I haven't seen a show. And other people yeah. are, are you kidding me? Um, I was going to shows the whole time. <laughs> I, who, I went to see, I was, um, I was able to go see John Legend, which was like incredible. Um, and just watching him him perform was like insanely inspiring. I did get to write with him, but yeah. um, it was it was awesome. Um, definitely, yeah, inspirational. Being that your credits include John Legend, Hunter Hayes, Tate McRae, Icon of Pop, you know, like it, it must be the lines are blurred between this is fun and this is work. But I guess John Legend is fun. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh, you should have seen me there. I was like. Woo like dancing because he has so many like upbeat songs and um yeah it was a great it was such a good time and it was actually my first um my first concert that I've ever been to here in Los Angeles so it was it was awesome I loved it oh what what's your what's your hometown are you originally a Jersey person yes I'm from New Jersey born and raised Where, whereabouts in Jersey Bergen County oh okay okay I know, I know there's the Bergen County Performing Arts Center, which is nice, but yes. you have to be more out about the Jerseyness because what state has given the world more famous entertainers than Jersey? Hey, I try, I try and tell at any opportunity, I will let you know that I am from New Jersey. I am proud, proud to be from Jersey. 
There you go. And my last question for you, nothing to do with your great career or your music. It's, do you have a TV recommendation you can give to me and my wife? Cause we need a new show to start soon. Oh my gosh. Okay. Mm. Love Island. Have you seen it? Wait, UK or US? Oh, it has to be the UK. I refuse to watch the US because it's all about the accents. Okay. Like when they start going into, hi babes, how are you? Like, <laughs> you, oh my God, it's, you need to watch that if you haven't. It's so good. Uh, that will go on our list and I, I appreciate that. Uh, best way to follow you online, is it the gram? The gram, the gram or TikTok. Um, yeah, I would say those two are my my top two. Outro.